Shante Karen will get the assignment of going against Tony Young at center circle. Good look at the Lawrence native and Shante Karen Young, an incredibly gifted athlete. 6'2", senior, an All-American on the high jump side for the track team for Oklahoma State and can dunk at 6'2". and has done so in those Midnight Madness type of events that at Oklahoma State. She, get off, she gets off to a fast start. Well, and she can make bucket. it look very easy, Brian, and that's for this Oklahoma State offense. They look to go inside. They love the inside-outside looks, and Young is where she gets it. She gets a lot of touches early in their offensive sets. A team that can go zone. Oklahoma State will open up in a man-to-man. -man. Chambers hounded by Bias, and Brittany trying to step around her man. Gets called for the travel and a turnover by the Wildcats on their first possession of the ball game. And that will be an interesting matchup to watch all night long. Tiffany Bias, she's going to put a lot of pressure out on Brittany Chambers. They want to try to limit possessions, get the ball out of her hands, force these other players to have to beat them from the perimeter inside and outside. Lindsay Keller with a basketball, wearing that shoulder wrap on her left shoulder. She hasn't been asked to score much this year. Much of that load has fallen on the rest of her teammates, including this young lady and Mark Young, another tough turnaround jumper and a fast start for the senior. She's that leading scorer and rebounder right now for Oklahoma State, but she just makes it look so easy sometimes for K-State. They're going to have to force her off the block. They can't give up such easy position inside. Oklahoma State comes in as Karen lets go of three. That'll miss. And the rebound chased down by Martin. Tejada trying to fight for it. Martin, who comes in having a triple-double already this year. We'll get the Oklahoma State offense started. The Cowgirls come in averaging 81 points a game, 80.7 to be exact, hitting 47% of their shots. This team can score a lot of points. They like to get out in transition, but this half-court offense really is all about going inside-outside, and then they'll look to put it on the floor and get the easy garbage baskets, just like they did right there with Tony Young. Broken pass, she's able to go and catch, gather, and score. Young, who really had a tough go of it last year, did not start for much of the season, came off the bench, did not nearly put up the numbers that she did the year prior, really has exploded as many thought she would in her senior season. Kevin another three-pointer, this one off the iron, and the rebound out of bounds to Oklahoma State. K-State's got to be able to get better shots than that, Brian, within their half-court offense. And this Oklahoma State team will force you to run your sets in the half-court. They're trying to limit that dribble drive penetration and kick out to these Kansas State shooters. But Shantae Karen with that three-point shot, they've got to get a better shot within the framework of their offense. And if you just joined us, the Wildcats with some more adversity this season to face as K-State lost two more players to season-ending injuries on Monday, including starter Asha Woods, putting the roster at seven active players heading into tonight. Kendra Spresser and Hottie Brown, the two backups off the bench tonight for K-State. And the Cats do a good job defensively, forcing a turnover. Tejada in transition. Chambers, her first look from long distance, and she connects. And that's so important right there. K-State taking advantage of opportunities in transition when they're there. And that time, Tejada gets to the middle of the floor to find her shooter, and that's Chambers with her feet set. Chambers, who came in at 36% behind the arc. That's the first three of the night for K-State. Mariah White forced to play in the post, doing a good job. Forcing another turnover, and the Cats in transition again. And Chambers trying to drive is fouled out on the perimeter by Tiffany Bias. And Chambers being able to drive to the basket, that's a new element to her game this year. You're absolutely right. It's something that she worked very hard on this summer is developing a penetration, the ability to get by people, using a quick first step, but also a hesitation dribble, being able to change directions, whatever you have to do to lose your defender. She gets herself open, but then she's also able to lose people off the dribble. Maybe Tejada dribbles off her own foot out of bounds, and it'll be Oklahoma State basketball. And we see right away that pressure out front on these Kansas State ball handlers. This OSU team will come, and they will come hard at every position and every possession out front. Oklahoma State back to work on the offensive end. Donahoe looking for her first shot and a foul as she puts it up. Bree Craig drawing the assignment of Donahoe in the early going. And that's a tough assignment right there for the freshman. But Bree Craig has been one of those sort of shut down defenders for Deb Patterson here in the start of the Big 12 season. So that's a pretty good matchup size wise and I think physical ability. They match up pretty well. But you do not want to foul jump shooters. And you especially do not want to foul Liz Donahoe. No, who has made everything from the line. 
and makes two more. She's now made 40 free throws in a row. Again, Crazy. You don't want to put her at the line. No. 62 of 64 on the year. And as Missy mentioned, 40 straight, nearing an Oklahoma State record. Chambers another three, fading back. Brittany's hit two. And the superstar for the Wildcats, who needs a big game tonight, already off to a good start. And she's creating space from the defenders, but using the screens and the handoffs, finding a way to get herself some open shots. Back to the offensive end, and Tony Young. One on one from the high post, so easy for her just to go right around Shantae Karen. She's got to get some help side defense from the rest of these Wildcats inside. Bias trying to stay with Chambers, who's gotten loose a few times. Brittany. Nice ball fake, had to get rid of it. Tahada will load up a long distance shot. That'll miss off the eye. K-State has put up on average 40 plus threes the last two games. We expect to see more of that tonight. Bias coast to coast, nice! Right hand for the left side. And she's got great vision and the ability whether it's to pass or to score. And if she doesn't have a chance to finish, she's always looking for an open player. But what I love about Tiffany Bias is the way that she can finish, Brian. She gets to the rim and she scores almost every time. Gatorade Kansas Player of the Year coming out of Andover Central. Chambers open again for another three and again hits it! Chambers, red hot to begin the game, has hit three three-point shots. High ball screens all day right now for K-State and Tiffany Bias. She's chasing and working so hard, but almost a double screen up top and it leaves Chambers open. She's not, Tiffany Bias doesn't get any help from her Oklahoma State teammates. Donahoe thought about an answer three. She'll take it. And the rebound to K-State. The three-point shot is one of those things that can certainly keep you in ball games. And the Wildcats, who already have a diminutive lineup, now with even shoulder bench. Chambers will split the defense and go to the basket. And Brittany Chambers has picked this team up and put them on her shoulders early. She has all 11 K-State points. We talked about senior leadership at the very top, and Brittany Chambers has to be that person on both ends of the floor. A lot of intensity out in the passing lanes, just like that right there for Shantae Karen. Active hands, and Kansas State is really picking up the energy, and they brought it here to start this game. Shantae Karen found on a breakaway, and Kansas State will head to a timeout, very much a part of this game against the 12th-ranked Cowgirls. Brittany Chambers with all 11 for the Wildcats. To success. Hottie Brown is coming to the game for the Wildcats, who have the basketball down only one, thanks to that young lady, Brittany Chambers, who has dropped 11 points to begin the ball game for K-State. She'll have the ball in her hand to begin this offensive possession for the Wildcats. And a little zone brought up by Oklahoma State. Looking to neutralize shooters for K-State. They've got to find the gaps, use the skip pass. Three-pointer down again for K-State. This one from Heidi Brown. They use the skip. You've got to make that zone shift, and Oklahoma State doesn't get out in time to contest that shooter. Well, Heidi Brown has now played in three straight games for K-State. It has played remarkably well, considering she hasn't played much. Lindsey Keller, an answer three-point shot. The Goddard, Kansas product. And that puts the Cowgirls back in front by a point. And the thing about Keller is, is that she does have that range. You've got to honor the three-point look by almost all of these Oklahoma State Cowgirls. Craig with a three-pointer that's pretty long. White then steals it right out of the hands of Bias. Chambers trying to drive and kick. And State back with a basketball. White to the basket. Reverse layup good. Great patience by Mariah White to allow that play to develop. Heads up play defensively, and then is able to get herself one on the other end. Well, K-State coming out with great emotion to begin this ball game. Again, you had an idea they might with all the injury problems they've had here lately. Bias to the baseline. Shut off. The rebound loose inside. There's Martin, and her follow goes. Loose balls, that 50-50 play. Kansas State cannot give those back to Oklahoma State. You've got to get the loose balls, do the little things, especially with this depleted roster. You can't afford to have those empty possessions or second chances for Oklahoma State. Guarded three for Chambers goes in! Watch out, Chambers is stalling. Hot to begin the game, 14 for the star for K-State. She's getting those looks from behind the three-point line and isn't afraid to back up as far as she has to. And for Oklahoma State, they've got to find an answer to be able to stop Brittany Chambers. In the lane, Donahoe with a runner. 
four now for Donahoe. The game is tied at 19. Chambers already has zoomed into fourth on the all-time scoring list for K-State with that last three-pointer passing Lori Kane. Some heavyweights await her in front of her. Ashley Sweat, Nicole Oldie, Kendra Wecker, Chambers driving baseline. Double team, the shot clock under 10 for K-State. Down to five. White in trouble in the lane, and a tie-up will give the ball back to K-State, but only two seconds remaining on the shot clock. And a timeout on the floor. When we come back, not much time to work with for K-State. Well, the Wildcats, despite some heavy injuries, have relied on their All-American, Brittany Chambers. and that is Brittany Chambers. Well, we knew she was going to have to come up big and she's going to have to the rest of the season, but for Brittany Chambers, she has got the hot hand to start. Knocking down the three-point shot, given space by this Oklahoma State defense, but using those high screens, mistakes by the defense, she makes them pay. But she's also not afraid to put it on the floor and go right to the rim, and that's what she's been able to add to her game. Makes her so much more difficult to guard throughout her senior season, that ability to penetrate and finish. Wildcats have only two seconds on the shot clock. They find Chambers, who does get the shot off, but can't hit it, and Oklahoma State able to get the ball back. This Oklahoma State team has gone to those isolations underneath, Brian, a lot of one-on-one -on -one looks. K-State's got to get better help side defense. You're at a disadvantage size-wise, but you've got to be able to help down low. Well, Kendra Suttles, who just checked into the game, it wasn't a pretty shot, but it does go, and it gives the Cowgirls a lead of two. Suttles. Saw quite a bit of starting time last year for Oklahoma State in place of Tony Young. I think the two of them inside for this OSU team, they're a good complement together. It's a finesse, but also some size. Not afraid to be physical underneath. Chambers a little heat check, three-pointer, can't hit it. And right back, settles with another three. So timeout by Deb Patterson, who felt like her team maybe laxed a bit defensively. It settles with the three after Young's other basket to get into double figures. And all of a sudden, you got Young with 10, settles with a three point shot. And Oklahoma State right back out in front. And late on the matchup in transition. And for K State, that's so important that they find players early in their transition defense because almost every player on this OSU, lot, on this OSU team has the green light from behind that three-point line. If they've got open looks, they're going to take it. And for K-State, they've got to match up sooner, get a hand in the face of the shooter, and not allow those easy looks from behind the three-point line. Now Kansas State has seen a 5-0 blitz quickly go up on the board by Oklahoma State. Mariah White will take over the point guard duties, bring the ball up the court. A five-guard lineup in the game for K-State at the moment. Shante Karen getting a breather. Here's Tejada. State has shot a, a quite a bit of threes, but hasn't hit too many. Brown catches, shoots, and scores again. Adi Brown already has five points for K-State. Donahoe, free for a three-pointer. That will miss and go out of bounds to the Wildcats. Adi Brown, a young lady out of Plains, Kansas, Southwestern Heights High School, came in as a Valley huge athlete from Southwest Kansas, a track and field star, had the all-state picks, hit almost 50% of her threes, but it was, again, that question, will it translate to Division I? Really hasn't seen much, if any time, not only last year, but then this, this year as well. But now she's going to have to play a lot of minutes for K-State. You're absolutely right. And for the Wildcats, it's opportunity that presents itself. And you've got to be able to come and do the little things. But every player on this team, as we said at the top, it's about accountability. You've got to be able to do it on both ends of the floor. This shot by Oklahoma State, and then a dangerous save will end up in the lap of the Wildcats. Tejada coast to coach trying to go up for a shot and gets bailed out a bit with a foul call. Haley to the line for two free throws. And kind of a phonetic pace right now on both ends. And for K-State, you like to take the opportunity when it's there. Get out in transition. Force this, force the action when the opportunity presents itself. But I think if you're Deb Patterson, you want to think a little bit in terms of when, the, when you have a chance, slow it down, get back into that half court, get some of those looks. But Haley Tejada can get out when she can, and that's where she can create and be very effective. Tejada will make the first. One more coming up. That foul was on bias, and that's her second. So she's going to.
get a little bit of a breather. Camry Anderson has come in. Junior College transfer from Independence Community College here in Kansas. Second free throw goes for Haley, her first two points. And the Cats are back within a point. And Jim Littell and this OSU team, he's really gone to about a top six rotation in Big 12 play, Brian. So Anderson's going to get some minutes now with Bias a bit in foul trouble. But that changes the look a little bit for them. She's got to be that primary ball handler. Martin has the ability to handle the basketball up front. And she can create as she's going one-on-one -on -one just like that. Martin driving on Chambers will get contact and a foul. Foul. The first foul on Brittany. And well, the foul came actually on Mariah White oh, on the reach in, right. and that's one of the things that they cannot afford to do. You've got to play smart now on both ends. And for Kansas State, it's going to be solid defense. When you're there in the help side, you've just got to get in position. Don't reach, move your feet, play without using your hands. That's critical right now for this group. Kind of interested to see as we get a shot there of Mariah White, who's asked to play a little bit in the post today at 5 7, at this young Brittany Martin. Freshman sensation for Oklahoma State. So Ballyhooed and All-American, number three shooting guard in the country coming out of high school. Quite a coup for Jim Littell and the Oklahoma State staff, and she has been all as advertised in the early going. Absolutely. I think one of the things that stands out when you talk about her for this Oklahoma State team, she's second in the Big 12 in steals. And that doesn't necessarily happen for a freshman. That means she understands how to play defense, is aggressive, and isn't afraid to get up in somebody's face and play good defense. Brittany Chambers has 16 points for K-State as we've played a little over 11 minutes into this contest. Incredible start for Chambers. Personally keeping K-State in the game. Anderson nearly turned it over. Donahoe trying to get contact, missed the shot, and a rebound tapped out to the Cowgirls means a reset. Donahoe off to a quiet start. Just four points in the early going. Lob pass inside. Suttles able to pin her man and score. And a great lob pass entry by Donahoe right there. Really a clear out inside. Looking for the lob. K-State's got to get better help side on the back for these Oklahoma State post players. So the Cowgirls by three. Shante lets go a three-pointer to tie the game. Not there. And Martin able to get the rebound. And then Brown trying to tie her up inside. The ball will stay with Oklahoma State, but good work by Heidi Brown. You like the aggressive play. And for Oklahoma State, they can't take anything for granted. They know they've got to take care of the basketball. There's one thing that's kept this Wildcat team in games all throughout the course of the season so far. It's that tough, aggressive defense. Active hands, active feet. They get a lot of steals, a lot of jump balls, and a lot of opportunities to take the possession the other way. Anderson controlling the point with bias on the bench, although as we say that, she heads to the scorer's table. Dono had the ball go right off her melon, and the ball loose to K-State. Craig, a pull-up three in transition. That'll miss off the back iron. Rebound tapped long outside to K-State as it went out of bounds. Cats catch a break, they'll get the ball back. And down three points in the early going to the 12th ranked Cowgirls. K-State hanging in there despite just seven active players tonight, largely because of this young Lenny. Brittany Chambers with 16 in the early going. Now trying to become just the third ever to get 1,800 career points. She came into tonight needing 84 to get 1,800. She's not quite on that pace, but pretty close. Well, she's in great company, and I think that's one of the things you look at that list, and it's all about great leaders and solid players, both ends of the floor. We've seen Brittany Chambers already turn up the heat defensively, and she's carrying this team on the offensive end as well. Six out of eight for the field, four of five behind the arc. Shot clock winding down. Karen, a three-pointer, and K-State continues to bomb Oklahoma State from outside. They're going to give her. They picked their poison, Brian. They're going to give that shot to Shantae Karen, trying to shut down the other shooters. They haven't been able to shut down Brittany Chambers, but if Shantae Karen can knock down just one or two of those, that's an added bonus for K-State. Cowgirls come right back with a drive from Martin, who has six points. That gives Oklahoma State a quick two-point advantage, but K-State continues to hit from outside. Six threes in the early going for the Wildcats. Mariah White to add to the ledger. In and out, no. Rebound 
bought for underneath, and Chambers able to come away with it. Spresser and Karen look like they each got a finger on it. Keeping the possession alive, giving yourself a second chance, and that's what you get right there. Chambers on penetration, she's gonna get to the free throw line, but that play starts with great anticipation and activity by Kendra Spresser and Shantae Karen to keep the possession for the Wildcats. Well, we talked about it, you and I did privately before the game, thinking that there might be this type of response from K-State. Faced with such terrible news on Monday with two good key players, one of them a starter out for the season, down to only seven players. It seems like sometimes when the chips are down, great players seem to step up, and, and players as a whole seem to step up and respond when faced with something like this. Well, and I think you have to do it as a group. You have to do it as a unit. There's no reason why one person necessarily has to carry the load. And what we've seen so far in this first 14 minutes or so is a team that really has come ready to play. Again, five players for Kansas State out at the moment, it, it is believed, with season-ending injuries. And two of them happened on Monday, one last week. Two of them happened prior to the season. So beginning of the year, a roster well over 10, suddenly whittled down now to seven. Donahoe on a drive, scores to get a half a dozen points. And this Oklahoma State offense is centered around isolation, Brian, and that's what they're doing. They're getting the ball to Martin, to Donahoe, to Tony Young, and letting them go strictly one-on-one -on -one off the dribble. K-State's got to get better help side. Craig, an aggressive drive and then foul. And you mentioned it before on the last possession with Chambers. K-State, yeah, they've taken some threes, 15 of them in fact, but they're still driving to the basket, not afraid to get contact. You've got to force the action. You can't just be a team live and die by that three-point line and stand out there at 22 feet. You've got to get inside. That's what's going to open up the three-point look, going against the defense, forcing them to have to make some decisions, choose to help kick off, find an open player, whatever that might be. This read and react dribble drive offense gives a lot of options for Kansas State. They've got to continue to force the action to the rim. Craig made the first, hits the second. That's her first two points. That foul of the way on Tony Young, that's her second foul, so she'll take a seat on the bench. Bias has returned. She's got the ball at the moment with two personal fouls. K-State still hanging around with the 12th ranked Cowgirls down just one in what has already been an incredibly high scoring affair in your K-State. I mean, the Cats score 60 points on average on the year, 62 to be exact. They are not a team that wants to have the ball and a score up in the upper 70s and 80s. No, this is not necessarily, I think, the pace and the numbers that Deb Patterson is looking for. But when you're making shots, it's okay. The key, though, is you've got to be able to neutralize the one-on-one -on -one options that this Oklahoma State offense is bringing. That's the key piece. And right there, you see Martin going one-on-one -on -one off the dribble with that rise jumper, but a great box out by White, and they get the foul on the over the back. And that's Keller, and that's her first. That's the sixth foul by Oklahoma State, so bonus time for the Wildcats now the rest of the way. King State will head to the line on the next foul from the Cowgirls. Five-minute mark approaching. K-State looking to get back in front. Tejada with a ball fake. Gets past her man. Missed the shot, but got a foul. And will head back to the line again. And if that's on bias, that's going to be her third. And Jim Littell immediately sends Anderson to the bench. And that's going to be her third. You're absolutely right. So she's going to have to spend this next five minutes on the bench for Oklahoma State. She took a shot as well to the face. But I like the aggressive play of Haley Tejada, not afraid to put it on the floor and look to create some offense for herself. Take advantage of that opportunity when it's there. Don't try to force the action too much. Bias could take his seat. No doubt for the rest of this half, but she will be on guard or be careful to not get an early foul to begin the second half either. Tejada missed the second, so the game tied at 32. Well, I think the difference now with Anderson at that point position. She's talented, as you said, a junior college transfer, but it changes the look a little bit, I think, for Oklahoma State. Right there, Donahoe trying to go one-on-one, -on -one, but better help defense, and White with the turnover. White finds a man in the corner. It's Tejada. Three is good! Tejada with the hot hand all of a sudden, and Kansas State leads the 12th-ranked team of the country by three. Creating offense with your defense. K-State's done it all season long. A great time to have a play like that by Mariah White. Well, Haley Tejada got off to a fast start this year for K-State. Cats have been hoping that she would find her magic again. Suttles posting up, has a quick seven points. 
she can establish that position very deep in the lane. K-State's got to try to move them out a little bit, Brian. Beat them to the spot. When you're undersized, not many players on the roster. That's tough to do, but you got to battle these players on that block. Karen left open. Can't hit the thong three-pointer. Donahoe, who looked like she rolled an ankle on that last possession, hits the rebound. Oklahoma State has certainly hurt the Wildcats down on the post, but the Cats staying in it with three-point shots. Keller would answer three. That is her second. Mix up and a switch off the screen, and they left Keller wide open. Kansas State's got to do a better job of communicating. They were trying to contain the dribbler off that high pick and roll, but you can't leave the shooter. Tejada driving to the basket, trying to get contact, missed the shot. And Oklahoma State another rebound. Alvarez winning that board 14 to 5. There haven't been a lot of missed shots though by K-State. Donahoe now a three-pointer and watch out Oklahoma State doing what they do, score points. And this is how they heat it up. You're absolutely right. They're going to get some long rebounds, get set in their half-court offense and knock down shots. K-State has battled here so far in this first half, Brian. They've got to compose themselves a little bit and get to that next media timeout, get a break and then be able to battle the rest of this half. Shante, a three-pointer, her second. But K-State not hesitating on open shots. That ends an 8-0 run by the Cowgirls and puts K-State back within a, a possession. A different look, as you said, with Bias not in there. The speed factor, Anderson certainly does not bring that to Hata, able to give her a little bit more breathing room. Donahoe, a guarded three, is an air ball and a rebound for K-State. Tejada with a head up on the dribble. Mariah White left open for a three-pointer. It's a connect on a three. Kansas State getting shots, and they're going to pick their poison. Mariah White, Shantae Karen, two players that Oklahoma State has elected to leave open. They're going to give him those looks. You've got to make the defense pay. Nine threes down for K-State here in the first half. The phrase is you live or die by the three. The Cats are living off it right now. Martin misfires from long distance. And K-State back to work in transition. Tejada feeling it. Let's go along jumper. That's a quick look and a rebound for Oklahoma State. We're in the 92nd mark of this first half. What an exciting first 20 minutes. Well, it's been fast paced. There's no doubt about that. And I think probably Deb Patterson would love to have that shot back by Haley Tejada. Take a chance when it's not necessarily there to get good shots in your half court offense. Anderson long on a three. Chambers another rebound. Cats go back to work. Tejada, a D3 just off the iron. And the rebound of Oklahoma State. Oh, K-State chasing some records at this point. Shot selection, though, so critical, Brian, for this K-State team. They can't afford to have bad, as we said, empty possessions. We talked about it at the top of this broadcast. Every single offensive possession has got to be a good shot. And for Kansas State, the last couple times down, maybe quick shots. Get better ones within the framework of your offense. Settles with nine. Chambers beats her man. Got fouled as she drove. And that's on Martin. That's her second foul. And Brittany to the free throw line with about 41 seconds left when we come back. The Wildcats with nine threes in the first half. Haley Tejada, a big part of the reason K-State's in the game. been able to do is knock down the open looks that Oklahoma State has been giving them. Haven't been too many forced possessions. The last couple trips down, Haley Tejada, I think maybe tried to do a little bit too much. That's the conversation in the timeout there at that last break. But ultimately for Kansas State, they're taking, taking what the defense is giving them, really not forcing too many. And having people, if they pick their poison, certain people are going to leave open, then those are the ones that have to step up and make shots. Brittany Chambers has gone crazy tonight on Oklahoma State. She has 19 points in the first half. Oklahoma State here will face a little full court press as they get the ball up the court. 10 second difference or so between game clock and shot clock. Cowgirls cannot hold for the final shot. White pickpockets her man and steals the ball. K-State into the front court with it. Heidi Brown returns, gives it to Chambers, and K-State now with a one-point lead can hold for the final shot of the half. Great decision by Heidi Brown. Slow it down, get the last shot of this first half. Chambers looking for 20 and a half. 
looking to get free. Shot a game clock winding down. Chambers drives, can't hit the layup as she drives to the basket. Still, K State, an impressive half of basketball, leading the 12th ranked Cowgirls at the break. 43 42, thanks to nine first half three pointers by K State and 19 from Brittany Chambers. We're back to talk about it and get Missy's thought to the first half when we return.